Uh, you start the recording, and there is already a question in the chat that I can, uh, I can read it for you. So, still? Yes. Soon? The question was, uh, why can, uh, I mean, I read it uh, before, why can you have uh, uh, chaos in dimension lower than three for discrete maps, like uh, logistic or Hanon maps? Okay, exactly. The, the question is, the <coughs> condition to have chaos in larger than, or three or larger than three dimension is a condition that you have for flows, uh, continuous uh, dynamical systems. For maps, this, uh, this condition is not applies. In fact, uh, as we will see in the future, in the next, uh, in the next lecture, we, we can have, uh, we can have uh, chaos also in one dimensional map. So the condition uh, larger than three dimension to have chaos is uh, 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 a requirement that holds only for continuous, so only for differential equations, so continuous time uh, uh, dynamical systems. Is that okay? It's, it's a good, it's a good, uh, good question, good uh, remark, uh, because, okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, I removed my mask, so if you don't mind. Okay, okay. <coughs> good morning. <coughs> Let me start with a small recap of our Le lecture of yesterday. So, first of all, with some uh, some uh, discussion, no, we we, we discover that uh, somehow determini determinism is not equivalent to predictability, because determinism is only a, a properties referring to the. Um, can you hear me? Okay. It's a property referred to the only to the dynamical to the dynamical law, to the evolution law. Why predictability involves uh, also the dynamical the dynamical law, but also our information on uh, the initial conditions. And if there are cases where our information of uh, initial condition is very rough and the dynamics is unstable, you can have some unpredictability in the future, okay? This is the first, uh, I would like, the, this, is, this is important, an important uh, distinction that I would like to, you, you bear in mind. The other lesson that you have that even still, even, uh, even a simple model like the pendulum when forced uh, with uh, a forcing that depends on time shows chaos is able to 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 have a behavior that appear unpredictable that appear random okay in fact i show you the 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 evolution no you remember the picture when the, the states uh, were mixed and uh, were uh, stretched and folding continuously, no? And, uh, okay. And the other thing is that the condition necessary to have chaos <coughs> is, of course, no linearity, because linear systems are always predictable. And, uh, and the other condition is that you, have, you work in three dimensions at least, uh, larger than three dimensions exception, and this, this is important, this good uh, um, remark by the, by the chat, by the, the guy in the chat, that this not apply to maps, to dynamical systems, which have a risky, discrete time, okay? Okay, and... Uh, I, I, can I, can I erase the, uh, the blackboard? Okay. Okay, and also yesterday we, 
he started to introduce a mathematical notion of dynamical systems. And the, the notion is uh, given by these uh, three objects, uh, omega, t, and mu, where, of course, omega is the phase space, the set of state uh, available to the system. Hmm? T is the, your evolution law, and generally I put uh, this T uh, because I, I, I mean that it's something that depends on time. Okay, this is a transformation. T is a transformation of uh, phase space into itself, or maybe even into subspace of omega, of omega. <coughs> and nu is called the invariant measure. If I don't remember, uh, if I remember correctly, we, okay, we give, we give also the classification of uh, dynamical systems, uh, and the classification is uh, discrete dynamical systems. Uh, so T could be discrete if T belongs to Z or to natural. OK. That could be a flow if T is defined by some differential equation. OK. And these both can be autonomous or non-autonomous. <coughs> if the evolution law, this is the map, let me write uh, t x t plus 1 equal to f at the state x. Hmm. are non-autonomous if this evolution depends explicit, explicitly on time and the same for this and, uh, and the other and the last classification that we saw was uh, conservative and dissipative conservative Conservative means that the volume during the evolution, consider that during the evolution, the volume, a volume or, or set in the phase space is displaced and deformed. So, okay, is the volume of this set and it's evolved are the same? I would say that, uh, we'll, we'll, let's call phi of, no, T of A are the same. I say, so if V is equal to, uh, see, sorry, this A, if the volume of A is equal to the volume of T of A, I say that the, ma the, the devolution is conservative, while if, there is, if the volume of the evolute, of the evolved set, is uh, less than V of A, I would say that the dynamics is contracting. Okay. Dissipative. In the, in. And this is the recap of uh, the lesson, the yesterday lesson. I can go. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. Let me start another another notion, let me introduce another notion, <coughs> which is the equivalence between uh, flows uh, and uh, flows uh, and vector fields. This is a mathematical subject, but sometimes in, in the books, uh, or mathemat especially in mathematical books, this, uh, this equivalence is done. So if I have a differ differential equation, it defines uh, a vector field, because if you take this 
of course, this quantity, this is a vector field in the phase space. But it's also true, the vice versa. If you have a field, you can construct the flow, the, 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 line, the line flow of the field exactly when you, what, when you, when you do it in uh, electrostatic, for example. And so there is equivalent, and, and the, the flow lines are defined, of course, uh, by the equation V of x. OK? Where S, S is not time, for example. It could be if, 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 uh, if uh, this is a directive field, you can construct the, the flow of the field. And S generally is not time, for example, it's a coordinate, a length coordinate. OK? So there is a, this statement is there is equivalence between factor fields and ordinary differential equation. Ordinary differential equations are equivalent to vector fields on phase space. Okay. <coughs> and generally, we call we are when when we we discuss. Uh, the evolution of uh, the dynamical system, continuous time dynamical system, we generally use the word flow just to somehow mean that uh, there is uh, this uh, equivalent. So the, the dynamics is nothing but the flow of points uh, which follow the, la the, the, the vectors of the, of, the, um, of the dynamics, OK? OK. Flow, when I see, when I, this is generally say flow, when I, in this, in this lecture, when I say flow, I mean that is the solution of the uh, differential equation associated to the vector field F. OK? It's clear question? Hmm? It's just a definition, nothing. The, all, the other two things that I would like to define is, for example, is the notion of trajectory. What is trajectory? OK, you see the definition is here. The definition is given in this, in this slide. OK. The trajectory is the successive position occupied at two time t by your point, which is displaced by the dynamics. OK? Very simple, trajectory is the elements of omega such that are displaced from the flow in a given time interval of time. T is zero, zero, generally zero, and T. OK. Ah, OK, we can, use, uh, we can use S because if you want to specify. And generally, is uh, given by your evolution of code, the law, evolution law of your coordinates. OK. For example, for three dimensions, you have uh, Parametric equation. This is a parametric, mathematically speaking, is a ma parametric equation of your trajectory. Okay? But there is another notion that is important that generally is confused. It generally is, uh, is uh, yes, confused with the, with the trajectory, and it's called the orbit. <laughs> the orbit, instead, is the geometrical locus, quindi, so the question is geometrical locus. OK, it's a, let's say, a curve, a curve in a dimensional space <coughs> defined by this property. Hmm? So where t is now is not more, any more important, because t is uh, only, you don't see t anymore. 
In fact, uh, what you do is, uh, if you have uh, this, uh, your representation in, uh, uh, in um, um, with time, the, of the trajectory with time, you can eliminate, you can remove t, and you have the equation of the orbit. So, and time now is no more important. In fact, I used this notation minus infinity to t infinity. Hmm? For example, the orbit of a planet around the sun are elliptic curves. Hmm? And of course, the orbit is, uh, is uh, spanned in time. But uh, as a whole set of motion could be considered a geometrical object. It's only a geometrical object. Hmm? It's an ellipsis, OK? But generally, these two concepts are confused. So maybe with a, some abuse of language, we, we speak of uh, orbits and trajectory at the same time. And I, I confuse you uh, much more. OK. <clears throat> OK, this is, we have already discussed, no? This is the fact that the maps also can be conservative and dissipative. And for this, you have to compute the Jacobian of the transform, of the transformation, because a map is only a transformation on the phase space. Hmm? depending on time, but it's a transformation on, on the phase space. So you compute the Jacobian, that is the, this, this, uh, this matrix, uh, the Jacobian matrix of the derivative of, uh, of f. Hmm? <coughs> it means you, you, you construct this, uh, this, uh, this quantity, for example. Suppose you have three. Uf3, x1, f1, x1, x2, x3, x2, x1, x2, and x3, x3, f3. You start uh, to make the table, the f1 with respect to the x1 d f1 with respect to x2, d f1 with respect to x3, and so on. So this is the f2 with respect to x1, d f2 with respect to x2, and so on, OK? And this is a 3 for three, 3 matrix, OK? And this is called the Jacobian. If you take the, determin the determinant of this matrix is called Jacobian, you discover that the determinant of Jacobian, you discover that if this is less than 1, the map, the, this transformation, contracts the volume on the phase space. If this determinant is equal to 1, the map Conserve, preserve the volumes, OK? And it's called conservative. It's something, OK. Now, if you remember our triplet, the only thing that you have to discuss now is the invariant measure, this guy. That is called invariant measure. Okay. What's the meaning of invariant measure? Someone can suggest hmm, someone wants answer. Any guess? OK, invariance measure, it's a mathematical definition, of course, 
I say that mu is invariant with respect to the dynamics t, so the evolution t, if mu of t minus t a is equal to mu a. OK? This is the definition. What does it mean? It means that t of a, t, it means here, you see, better than t of a, it's uh, the set of the preimages of a. OK? If apply, it means that if x, x belongs to t minus a, is here, x belongs as a vector, of course. Then, after the dynamics, it falls into A. OK? This is the definition. It's a pre-image pre -image of uh, and this is t, t of x. OK? Questions? Solid definition, huh? It's a mathematical definition of pre-image. So this means, and uh, the fact that the measure satisfies this question, this, uh, sorry, this question, this, this property, we can say that this is invariant under, under the dynamics. OK? Consider that uh, if uh, <coughs> uh, omega with the measure is considered a measurable, a measurable, m measurable, measurable space. Uh, mm? And if this measure is uh, uh, normalized to 1, this measurable, measurable space becomes a probabilistic space. OK? So if you read the mathematical books on chaos, on deterministic chaos, uh, generally you say that the dynamical system is nothing, nothing but a transformation of the, on a probabilistic space. OK. Uh, and uh, why we use a uh, uh, measure to describe, to describe uh, deterministic uh, systems because because they are not probabilistic system in strict sense but how ma in s somehow it's uh, describing the evolution of, of a system in terms of measures on the evolution of measures is something that is more more simple hmm? and uh, so it's convenient I would say okay and now there, let me make a very brief uh, 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 excursion on the, the concept of measure because I don't know if uh, all of you are familiar with the, with the concept of measure. Hmm? Have you ever seen uh, the, the notion of measure before? You see? You, yes? I, I have but, I'm not but yes, no, I'm not formal for the moment. I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, but do you want to, to, to have a, an idea what is measure? Or my idea of measure? <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, the statement is, in other words, it's important to understand how initial distribution evolved toward, toward the invariance measure. OK? This is the, one of the problems of dynamical systems. The invasion, invariant measure is something that is very important in dynamical systems. OK, what is measure now? Of course, measure is a generalization of, of a very simple and intuitive concept of uh, 
length, volumes, weight, charges also. And uh, for example, you say that uh, this length is uh, 10 centimeters, okay. But as usually in mathematics, this, this, this intuitive uh, notion should be formalized very, very precisely. Okay, and this is the, uh, <laughs> what we are trying to do now for, for the moment. Okay. Uh, measure, generally so, is a procedure, so a function on, a set, on sets, which gives to a set some, gives to a set some values that is the weight of the set. In some sense, uh, it says uh, how big is this set. But big, uh, not only in dimension, could be big also because it contains a lot of points. Hmm? So it's heavy. Consider two bags of sand. One is heavier because there is more sand, and the other is lighter. And this is the, and we have to compare these two bags. And this is the, what measure do, does in, in, in practice, for example. In fact, you assign to each set a number on uh, positive reals. And uh, <coughs> in which way? <coughs> OK, in which way? I go there for democracy. OK. I would like to give uh, the idea of measure for more general sets. Uh, and more general sets means that I can use for defining these sets the intervals. Hmm? The notion of interval for some sets is, uh, is usual, is use, useful, is useless, for example. Because there could be wild set. Uh, here I have uh, two examples, uh, I, I put two examples of, of set. For this is the counter set. And the counter set is generated in this way, is a fractal set in the, in the end, is generated like this. You have 0, take the segment 0 and 1. First generation, generation 0. Remove, divide this, this interval in three pieces, equally spaced pieces, OK? And then. In the next generation, you remove the central piece, the central part. But you can do, you iterate the procedure, OK? Divide this in three pieces, equal pieces, and remove the central pieces, the central piece, OK? You go here. Like this. Okay. You iterate the procedure and you can ask what kind of a set I arrived to. Hmm? This set is fractal in some sense that uh, Angelo Vulpiani maybe will explain in which sense is fractal because. Is a strange dimension. Hmm? This set is full in the sense that it, it has the same order, the same order of the real segment. While I removing pieces and pieces and pieces continuously, we can show, and you can find it in every also in internet, you can find a simple demonstration, but I don't, I don't have time, simple proof, that this object has the same, the final, the, final, uh, the final set has the same power of the real, could be put in correspondence with the reals. Okay, it's full. What is strange is uh, full, Notwithstanding that I removed a lot, a lot of things inside of it. Okay. Questions? Sorry, I'm not familiar with the concept of power of the real. 
The power of the reals means power of the reals is uh, the fact that uh, you, can't num you, you can't make reals in correspondence to the natural, natural set. They are uncountable. So rational, for example, the rational are countable because you can put them in correspondence with the natural. Hmm? Real cannot be put in correspondence with this, uh, with the nature. There are many, many, many than rich than than uh, than uh, natural point, and this is called the, the power of continuum. This is the power of discrete, and this is the power of continuum. But it's uh, uh, yes, exactly. It's exactly the cardinality. It's the power. It's considered the cardinality. And this is called Aleph zero. Uh, Aleph, I don't know Aleph. Oh, Aleph is uh, from, from the Jewish uh, alphabet. This is Aleph one, Aleph zero, and this is Aleph one. Aleph, I don't know. Maybe Aleph is. Uh, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. There is a question uh, from the chat. Yes. So Matteo is asking, I didn't get why we use the pre-image of t in order to define the invariant measure. Is it possible to use the image instead? Yes, because uh, in this case, this is generally do if you don't have invertible maps. If the map is invertible, you can say, you can say this is equivalent. But if the map is not invertible, you have to work with the pre-images. So invertible, not invertible. OK? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, <coughs> so fine. I just want to go to go faster because it's not very important in the, in the future. But anyway, it's a contest that you have to consider if you want to read some some paper on the dynamical system. So, in other words, uh, the, the fini defining the, the measure of interval is quite simple. No, because the measures of interval is the difference between the two extrema, OK? But if you have a complex set, how do you define the measure? No? Consider you have, uh, for example, the irrational or the counter set. You, don't, can't, you, you can't use the segments, because there are no more seg segments in this. Uh, in this. I, remove a, I remove a lot of segments. Hmm? OK. There are, Basically, there are isolated points. These are isolated points. And the segment, I, I can define the, the, the measure of isolated points. OK. And in this, uh, we, in this perspective, uh, uh, the help comes from the definition of abstract measure theory over a set omega. OK, we want to define, given a set omega, we want to define the, the measure of all subset in omega. And this is called the power of, uh, of omega. So I would like, uh, my idea is if I have uh, omega, omega, a set omega, I construct, uh, if I have a set omega, OK, I construct this strange uh, Set, family of set, that is the set of all the parts of omega. This is omega, it's the set of all the parts. So all subset, all subset of omega. And I call this the power of omega. Power of omega. I would like to define a measure 
on this uh, subset. Of course, this not, cannot be possible in general because P of P, the power of omega, contains a lot of wild, wild sets that could be, could, couldn't be measurable. How oh, here, as example, how do you construct, for example, uh, the, the power of omega? If omega contains only two elements, uh, the power of omega contains uh, omega itself, uh, the empty set, uh, and also on all the subset that you can form from these two, these two elements, OK? And this is the power. In this case, it, it's countable, of course. It's countable. Uh, OK. Uh, yes? Uh, then why we are taking the set of AB and omega if they, they, they are not the same? Or? Those uh, P and, and the omega is not the same, you see, because omega, this, the question is, Yes, because they belong to, they are subset of A. Yes, but the last one. Yes, because they are subset of omega. No, what I'm saying is that omega and the last set, the last. Uh, ah, sorry, ah, sorry. Uh, yes, in this case, omega, yes, these are redundant. Yes, of course, you're right, sorry. Yeah, it's a redundancy, a redundancy, yes. You're right, thank you. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> of course, once you have this set, uh, okay, uh, okay, given, so we would like to give a measure on this, uh, uh, on the power set, no? on the power of omega. But this is impossible because we have lots of wild sets that are surely. I cannot even define, for example. Uh, we would be satisfied if you could assign a measure to a good collection of the sets in P of omega. Huh? I don't want to measure everything in P of omega. I would like to have uh, the measure of some subset. This subset is called the algebra, sigma algebra. and. Uh, define the collection of measurable set, OK? The algebra belongs, of course, to the power of omega. And the algebra, the sigma algebra, has to, uh, to, have, to, has, uh, has to have three properties, for example. No, for example, three properties, basically. First, uh, omega and the empty set belong to the algebra. A. If A belongs to the algebra, also the complement of A belongs to the algebra. The complement of A, if I, I don't know if you are familiar, complement of A, if this omega and this is A, the complement of A is all that, that still stay outside the uh, a, okay, and this is the complement of A. Okay. That is generally defined in this way. Okay, so if A belongs to the algebra, also A, the complement of A belongs to the algebra, and if you have a collection, a countable collection, countable means that you can consider one, two, three, so countable. No? They are in correspondence with the, the natural number. So you have a countable collection of a set of the algebra. Even the countable union belongs to the algebra. And this is called the closure and the countable unions. Once you define, when you, when you are able to define this class of subsets, OK, then you say that you can define, you are allowed, you are allowed to, to define the measure. Hmm? And the measure, so it's an application of, 
is a, an application, a function of the algebra toward the real, uh, the positive reals, uh, onto the positive real, with the property this, that the measure of the empty set is zero, of course. And if you take a collection of elements of the algebra that are disjoint, so the intersection is zero, is the empty set, <coughs> if i is different from j, so here this, there is this, the, the plot, the, 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 the scheme of this, uh, and this is called count countable additivity, then you can define the measure. So, and the conclusion, and I stop here for the measure, the notion of measure bas based on countable infinite collection of sets, the algebra, is the concept of Lebesgue measure because uh, due to the fact that the mathematician who introduced this theory of measure, that is a generalization of the theory of Peano Jordan, that is uh, the standard uh, way to introduce measure in, in, general, in general analysis courses. This is a, an extension. Basically, with Piano Jordan, you can measure lots of, lots of set. But with the back measure, you have much more sets that become measurable. OK? Finish. Stop. At the moment, I have, I've defined, I hope you have an idea, I hope I give you an idea of what these three objects means, OK? <coughs> but the question that I, I think you, you may ask is, well, OK, but why do we care about, uh, the, the, dynamic, about the, the measure in dynamical system? We can look at the trajectories and we are satisfied, for example instability of trajectory, fixed point. We can see, we can understand the dynamics by looking, for example, the trajectories. And the question is more, more is of course, uh, <laughs> reasonable. Uh, I can answer to you, I can answer you in three, in three ways, for three reasons, for example. I would say that, first of all, invariant measure means that the evolution preserves the probability, OK? Since that, if your system evolves, you don't need to recalculate the probability. You don't need to change your probability, recalculate them. Invariant measure is always the same. Hmm? OK? The second thing that, and this concerns basically these, these lectures, uh, this set of lectures, chaotic evolution amplify errors. So in some sense, a single trajectory is not so important, not so... Um, mm, mm, determinant, so not so, I would say, uh, um, typical of your, of your system. No? You, you, don't much, you don't learn too much looking at single trajectory. You prefer to, to, to see a set of trajectory and generally starting from an initial condition, a box of initial condition. Okay? So we are interested not in the single evolution that is not representative, because it's not representative. If you, are, if you, say, if you say a lot of points are moving around, uh, and you say, OK, what is this? I don't know. But maybe your information is much more uh, important if you consider, instead of a single evolution, a set of uh, initial condition around your initial condition. No? OK, a box of initial condition. And finally, more importantly, invariant measure is important for ergodic theory. Ergodic theory stands at the fundamental, at the fundament of uh, statistical mechanics. And ergodic theory says that you say that a, a system is ergodic if you can replace the time averages of observable during the dynamics with the average on the phase space. In formulas, it means that this is the time average of your observable phi. You can replace, if you are not able to compute this, you can replace the averages over the measure, the invariant measure, with respect to the dynamics, OK? 
And this is the foundation of statistical mechanics, hmm? the ergodic hypothesis. OK. Just me, let me give you some example just to, OK, <laughs> consider, for example, a simple model like this, very simple. X dot is equal to 1, Y dot is equal to omega. And you, can, you take this modulo 1. This is called torus, the rotation of torus, because if you consider the trajectory, no, they are straight line, of course. Those are straight line. Hmm? If you integrate, this is very simple, the straight line. But consider that we are identified this part with this part, and this side with the other side. So basically, you have a, you have a leaf, and you are, you are doing this. And you are folding again this. And this is a torus. Torus is a mathematical, is a mathematical uh, object, uh, defines, uh, it's defined like this. Mm, OK. And maybe you used a, a torus. Uh, when you were a child and you want to, to swim, and you can swim, of course. OK. And uh, uh, yes, OK. Now, apply the definition that I gave you before. So the, the omega, the, the omega is, uh, OK, the set. Uh, belongings to the torus, OK? No? So there are points uh, in this uh, square, OK? And the transformation, basically, it's uh, very simple because you have to integrate. So it's uh, the translation on the torus is a trans basically a translation, OK? So sorry, a rotation, OK? It's a translation, but since you are com you're coming back, it's a rotation. And the measure, of course, is the Lebesgue measure that is the the back measure basically is the measure of uh, very simple. It's uh, the measure that you use when you make integration, the x and the y. So you divided your set with this, uh, this simple box, infinitesimal box, and it's called the Lebesgue measure. OK? The torus, uh, and we will see in the following, the rotation of torus, since a very, very unnatural, uh, very, very artificial, artificial uh, uh, system. However, we will see, hope we will see, that actually the rotation of tori represents the integrable system. So when you are able to integra integrate an integrable system, what you find is that the motion is nothing but the motion of a d-dimensional tori, OK? So that's why this, uh, this uh, uh, transformation is important in, uh, in, uh, in, in mechanics. OK. And finally, I would like to show you that it is uh, the notion of omega t and mu for the Hamiltonian flow. Uh, do you know Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian dynamics? OK. Everyone? OK, perfect. Good. OK, Hamilton equation. Hamilton equation are defined by you give an Hamiltonian that in principle could depend on time. And you uh, define the motion of the system defined by the Hamiltonian with the Hamilton equation. In this case, omega, of course, is the set of uh, the momentum, generalized momentum and generalized coordinates, maybe in R2n. T of e, T is the flow, the solution given by the Hamiltonian flow, the Hamiltonian equation, OK? And the invariant measure is, again, the Lebesgue measure, OK? This measure. 
And this is why this is why this uh, is an invariant measure. In fact, if you recall the lecture of yesterday, we discovered that uh, the system can con preserve uh, the volume of the phase space, and this is an uh, infinite volume of the phase space, uh, infinitesimal volume of the phase space, uh, if the divergence of the field uh, defined by the equation of motion, if the divergence is zero. In fact, if you take the, the, the divergence of this field defined by the equation of motion, you see that this is identically zero. It means that if you have a volume and a phase space, this volume is deformed, again deformed, again deformed, but its extension, so its measure, remain the same, remain the same. And so we say that this is, uh, so this is the invariant measure. Hmm? But, but, if you have, sorry, but if you have conservation of energy, hmm? <coughs> The situation becomes more difficult, for example, because you know that uh, the conservation of energy implies that the motion occurs on the manifold defined by the, the, the surface of energy. No? So the manifold is defined as the set of PQ belonging to omega, such that uh, satisfies this condition. OK, this is the manifold. Hmm? The manifold means that, for example, the motion occurs Manifold, consider that it's a surface on the phase space. Hmm. So the motion occurs on this, in this surface. Okay. H equal to E. And the motion lives there. Okay. In this case, uh, the invariant measure is defined on the surface. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, and you see, you can discover that uh, the invariant measure for a system living on the energy, for a Hamiltonian system living on the energy surface is something like this, uh, where the sigma is the element, uh, infinitesimal element of the surface, uh, OK? This one, this sigma, and this is the measure that is, is invariant with respect to the Hamiltonian flow on the manifold, okay, on the constant energy manifold. Here there is a very simple demonstra demonstration of, of that. Uh, do you want to? Do you want that I show you how, why? Because this is the. Do you want me, or not? Shall I make? Okay, the demonstration is very simple. Uh, the proof is very simple. Uh, suppose that you have uh, the surface A. You are interested in. And you make a displacement uh, to another surface, energy sur energy sur constant energy surface, that is called A plus delta. Well, delta is supposed to be small. Supposed to be small. So <coughs> you have, this is the equation for this, uh, for this surface, and this is the equation for this surface, where this, equa this, this surface is obtained by displacing uh, on the, along the normal the points, uh, OK? And we would like to know which kind of displacement I need 
to apply in order to pass from this equation, this uh, surface to the other surface. If you expand this in You make an expansion of this because epsilon is not so much, is not so great, uh, so because delta is small. You make an expansion, and then you see that uh, now this cancel with this because of, of this condition. OK, can you read? And then you see that uh, epsilon is nothing but, but delta E divided by n, the normal to the surface, scalar h. But if you remember the geometric, geometry, some notion of uh, differential geome geometry, you know that the gradient to a surface is already normal to the surface. So this, uh, this quantity is nothing but the length of the gradient. OK. And now you see that uh, <coughs> delta, OK, delta, the variation of the volume, hmm, OK, is given by this quantity. And the, OK. Question? Yes. Depending on the answer, maybe I have a question or not. Uh, we are saying that uh, if there is an invariant measure, we will, if, sorry, if the measure varies and it's not invariant, we will have dissipative dynamics, right? And, uh, or uh, in, pr in principle, yes. If you have, uh, yes, in principle. But uh, uh, it's not so general, OK. But uh, in general, if you have dissipative dynamics, uh, you're your system is shrinking, and so it's going. Uh, so your measure is changing in the sense. Yes, of course. OK. OK, then. But if the Hamiltonian system, of course, depends on time, even uh, the definition of invariant measure is not, is not uh, okay. a good. Uh, OK. It, no, maybe it, uh, No, it preserves the also, the, uh, even uh, the Hamiltonian, it depends on time, it preserves. Uh, OK, I just, I, 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 OK, let me think. Uh, tomorrow I, I answer. OK. And uh, in any case, dissipative systems uh, uh, does not conserve the, uh, the, the, the invariant measure. Even if, uh, even if, uh, even if, uh, you can have uh, the invariant measure on the attractor, for example. So even if uh, you start with, with a system uh, with a volume uh, like this, uh, and uh, you arrive onto the attractor, for example. So your dynamics brings you on the attractor. OK, once you, have, once you stay on the attractor, the dynamics become, come, can become invariant on the attractor. OK? Mm -hmm. For the Hamiltonian systems, the invariant measure is all the, the, uh, it's defined on the whole space. Uh, but for the, for the dissipative systems, the invariant measure is only defined on the attractors. OK? No, I can skip. Lot Cavoltera, you have already seen. And, and I give you just a, a, a classification of dynamical system. Maybe it's so premature, but it's, so, it's, it's an anti, too anticipated. But I would like to give you an idea of what kind of uh, classification one use uh, when uh, deal with uh, dynamical systems. This is a classification. 
it's a general classification anyway. And uh, you have uh, uh, five levels of a hierarchy, which depends on the fact on the complexity of the dynamics, for example, no? And uh, so the degree of randomness, basically. The weakest requirement is ergodicity, and uh, it uh, concerns uh, uh, chaotic and non-chaotic systems. So this is uh, the weakest uh, condition that you have, definition of, uh, of systems. OK, generally ergodic means that uh, uh, lots of systems are ergodics, <laughs> ergodic, for example. Mixing means that uh, you can have, uh, for this system, you can have relaxation to equilibrium. So chaos, uh, in this case, is sufficient condition, but it's not necessary to have, to have the, uh, um, to have the uh, relaxation to equilibrium. Kolmogorov systems are generally the definition of a chaotic system because they show the sensitive dependence to initial conditions. And also, C. Anosov are considered globally instable, uh, globally instable. So every point is, uh, of, the, of the system are, is, uh, is unstable. Huh? You have a lot of unstable trajectories. Every trajectory is, is unstable. And finally, you can have uh, systems that are so complex, and so the evolution is so complex, that can be considered equivalent to a coin tossing. OK? They are deterministic, but are so uh, complex, so uh, the evolution is so erratic that resu quite resemble, no, actually resemble a Bernoulli system that is a, a coin toss. This is a coin tossing, and so this is the classification that you can find in some in some books. Uh, okay. Mm. And finally, I would like to, to show you the, the global, the goal of dynamical system theory. The global dynamical system theory is you have, uh, is to understand the effect of the evolution of, on a state and uh, at a longer time to, to have the possibility to make some kind of prediction, even if a transient behavior is important. In this, uh, in this goal, there are two possible uh, paths, two possible uh, strategies. One is called the topological or differential, geometri ge differential geometrical uh, approach. It studies the trajectories, the properties of the trajectories, fixed points, periodic orbits, attractors, bifurcations, and instability in general. The other, instead, is called ergodic. It, it concerns basically the behavior. You, you try to understand the behavior of trajectory, not looking at single trajectory, but looking at the measure. Okay, and this is called the measure theoretical point of view. And here, the scheme: you have dynamical system. One approach is the topological one, and the other is the ergodic. Okay. Do you want to stop some relax or? Hmm? Okay. 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> Let's 10, do minutes 10 minutes is enough, okay. So we'll be back uh, at uh, noon 15. Start. Are you ready? Okay. <coughs> so uh, now we, after we have defined the, this, uh, the general definition of dynamical system, we start 
how to study this kind of, of, of systems in, 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 uh, in practice, okay? And the first things that one can do, for example, is the visualization of the dynamics. Since the dynamics is very complex, very, very complicated, you would like to understand the, the behavior of that trajectory, for example. If it's chaotic, it's not chaotic, how it behaves, and so on. And the visualization, of course, uh, is uh, in dimension d <laughs> greater than 3 is, of course, impossible. But, however, to have a qualitative uh, uh, idea of the behavior, we can resort to the called Poincaré section. In the first lesson, I already introduced the Poincaré section, but I call it the stroboscopic view, but they are the same, basically. Okay, Poincaré section means that you can define a plane, for example, and, uh, or a D, minus one surface, and consider the intersection uh, of your motion with this surface, but only the intersection that uh, crosses the plane from a given side. So if you go this way, you can consider, for example, the intersection in the plane that goes only in this direction. You don't count. Uh, for example, no, you go here, and you go here, and so on. You can count, for example, the intersection in the other way. Hmm? And this is called the Poincaré map. Poincaré, in fact, introduced this map in uh, 80, 1881, and he called this uh, return map, because, in fact, is uh, the return map onto the surface. Anyway, it's a good, uh, I, it gives a good idea, for example, of your motion and uh, 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 of, the, of the behavior of your system. And the Poincaré map of the flow, so is defined by the intersection. So it's a map because one intersection, you have an, an X intersection, an intersection exactly is a map, okay, of course. And you define, generally, this map in this way. Hmm? But it generally is constructed numerically, hmm? because you don't have uh, technique to construct uh, the, the, the Poincaré map. Anyway, it's important, for example, because uh, a periodic behavior on a map is a set of isolated points. For example, a periodic motion appears on a Poincaré map a Poincaré section as a set of isolated points, for example, because the motion uh, come here and then it's move, uh, come here, come here, and so it replicates. Uh, so you have, uh, for example, you have only four points if the period is four, okay? But if the motion is quasi-periodic, quasi-periodic, so you have on the Poincaré map just a line, okay? Not points, but a full line if the motion is quasi-periodic. Quasi-periodic -period and quasi-periodic motion are generally stable motion, are not chaotic. So, the signature or non-chaotic behavior on the Poincaré map is points, isolated points, or a single, a single uh, curve, okay? The advantage of the Poincaré map this is uh, also invertible. In fact, if you reverse, if you integrate your, your uh, trajectories uh, backward in time, you have, of course, the inverse of the Poincaré map. And, uh, okay, so the map is invertible. And uh, what else? Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a natural way for passing from continuous time dynamical system to discrete time dynamical system. So, but in a way, in an important way, because if the system is conservative, the map is conservative. So it preserves, for example, 
lots of uh, information about uh, the, <coughs> the dynamics. Mm? OK. So if, the, if the, for example, if the flow is ergodic, the, the, the map is ergodic, if you have chaoticity, the map signals this chaoticity. See, if you have conservation, the map is conservative. It, con it preserves areas, OK? While the flow preserves volumes, uh, in here they, they preserve the areas on the surface, OK? The problem is, uh, the caveat is that this is in, uh, choosing, choosing a good surface section so Poincaré section, is a very difficult, a very difficult uh, subject. And in general, there is no strategy, no general strategy for doing that. OK? Another discretization that coming from the, 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 the flow is the map of the flow. What are you doing in this case? This is, for example, I don't know if you are familiar with the integration scheme, but this is an Eulerian integration scheme. Basically, what do you do? You <coughs> divide your interval of time in steps. Hmm? OK, you divide your interval of time in steps. And you want to discretize your dynamics. And the way to discretize your dynamics is very simple, because the, if this is your, if your, I write, what you have to do is to integrate in each in this interval. So and it's called h is the amplitude of each interval. You say that the integration on this on this interval is something like this x x at time plus h is equal x at time t plus of course the integral from t to t plus h of the to f of x and to okay I integrated it in, in this interval, OK? And this is, the, this is called the flow map. Hmm? And the flow map, because it's the map of the flow. You are discretizing the flow, basically, OK? And the flow map has uh, also is, a, is a, another interesting map that we see in, uh, in the following. OK. And. Uh, it could be used, for example, to, uh, to have an idea also of your, of your uh, the behavior of your, of your system. I give you just an example of the Poincaré map. And the system I want to, to study is called the elastic, elastic pendulum. Again, we, we don't move from <laughs> out, away, away from the pendulum, of course, in this, in this uh, in these lectures, OK, and the, and the pendulum, elastic pendulum, is something like this. You have a mass connected to the pivot, to the, to, to the pivot by a spring. So consider in the, in the original pendulum, this quantity was inextensible. But now the, the, the length of the pendulum is extensible. Hmm? And uh, OK, you can write your Hamiltonian, hmm, where ah, uh, you have the coordinate, for example, if you put a coordinate system in this way, this is the mass x ray, for example. This is x, and this is y. Hmm, OK. You can write the Hamiltonian. And because you have considered the energy due to the fact that is, there is the gravity, so your mass is subject to the gravity. Hmm? 
and you can write the and this is the the energy the potential energy to the, the of the of the gravity and the other potential energy comes from the fact that you have a spring hmm? you have a spring okay if i ask you a question how many degrees of freedom is this system right two how many variable i need to to describe the the phase space one, one. No. I have one, two degrees of freedom, x and y. But I need also the, mo the, the, the momentum. So my phase space lives in four dimensions. OK? One degree of, two degrees of freedom, four dimension of the phase space. OK? And <coughs> for example, if you, ah, OK. Since the energy is conserved, since the energy is conserved, you have the advantage that you can use only three you can remove one of the of these uh, since this is constant you leave the motion lives on the energy the, uh, sorry this is h lives on the surface defined by the conservation of energy, you can, for example, you can consider this one because you can invert this uh, expression and you remove, uh, for example, P from your description. So actually, you have only three, three variables for describing the state of your system because the system lives. Uh, on a surface defined by this, this equation. But you can reduce again the phase space if you take uh, the surface of Poincaré, a Poincaré surface. For example, uh, a nice Poincaré surface is the one that you obtain when you put uh, in this Hamiltonian y equal to 0. And uh, if you compute the intersection a different initial condition. So you make the integration of your motion for several initial condition. What you observe is the Poincaré section. And what is very interesting is uh, this Poincaré section tells you that the system has a very, very complex behavior. In fact, uh, you can have stable behavior in these regions. They are called uh, um, um, stable islands, hmm? but also in this way, in this part of the initial condition, you have a stable island, so the motion is not chaotic. But if you move away from this part, you can have, for example, a chaotic sea. So these systems, these systems can develop chaos, for example. Okay, another very simple system in which chaotic behavior can appear depending on the initial condition, OK? Just to stroboscopic map, as I told you, is another way to make a Poincare section. The difference that, that is you, instead of considering a, a, single, a single plane, you consider planes that are defined by your clock. So by the fact that your system is uh, periodic, uh, so your dynamical system is periodic, uh, so your field depends on time, but in, in, a, in a periodic way. So this, pe this period defines this kind of planes, uh, for example, this is Q and this is, uh, this is X, uh, Y, and so this is the phase space, but this is the time. So at, ch at each time, at each uh, period, you can uh, find the intersection with the planes, with the planes at a given period, and you project all these planes onto the initial plane, and you see also in this case the behavior of your system. You have an idea, no? The system is three-dimensional, but you have, for example, in this case, an idea on a two-dimensional description. If your system is chaotic, is non-chaotic, if there are stable points and whatever. Okay. <coughs> 
again, I give you the example, numerical example of that. This is the, si the system, uh, this is a double well, consider that the, this, uh, the system is a, 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 a particle moving in a double well, hmm. and uh, also is forced by this, uh, this external forcing. Okay, this is the potential energy of the system. You can do the strobo, you see that the evolution with certain initial conditions, of course, is chaotic. So the motion goes in strange way from one, one well to the other well, basically. Jumps, it remains, it explores the well, then jumps and so on, going back and forth between the, the, these two wells. And if you make the stroboscopic, uh, the stroboscopic uh, uh, representation, you see that, uh, of course, the motion is chaotic because you see that uh, the section behaves in this way. What you can see, this, 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 uh, this, this simple, uh, this simple uh, model is, of course, mixing. In fact, you see that there is uh, some kind of uh, Mix, mixer, let's say, uh, like in the kitchen, no? and uh, and this is uh, the typical behavior of chaotic of chaotic chaotic uh, evolutions. This mixing is due to the fact that you have simultaneous. Uh, so this mixing, mixing is also the definition of the system. Okay, do you remember in the classification system? I defined the system are mixing. In fact, the chaotic, chaotic system in general are mixing. And there's uh, the, the fact that this mixing is the simultaneous action of steering due to the instabilities of the dynamics, but also folding. Because, of course, the system lives in a finite uh, uh, environment, so <coughs> it cannot be stretched. Steering, sorry, stretching is, is, a, is the, right, the, right, the right word. Stretching. Stret stretching. OK, stretching is due to, to the instability, but since your system lives in a finite environment, so it's not infinite. Generally, physical system lives in a, in finite uh, in finite environment. Mm -hmm. You don't expect they escape to infinity. So you have uh, the stretching, but soon the stretching is accompanied by the folding. This continuous stretching and folding, stretching and folding, produce the effect of chaos that somehow resemble some mixing effect, OK? OK, now it's time to go to Hamiltonian dynamics. And uh, I would like to make some uh, uh, consideration about Hamiltonian dynamics. and it's importance in chaotic system, because also Hamiltonian dynamics can be chaotic. OK. <coughs> uh, generally, Hamiltonian dynamics, you can find Hamiltonian systems in physics everywhere. OK, for example, in uh, mechanics, uh, in celestial mechanics, in uh, physics, many body systems, uh, physical fluid, and whatever. It's characterized by n degrees of freedom. So you mean that this phase space uh, is two-dimensional. So the phase space uh, is, the, is defined by this uh, set of vectors, uh, the states, uh, where you have the uh, uh, momentum and the generalized coordinate. And these are called canonical variables. OK? Canonical because, canonical because they, are, they are good. OK. The evolution of, of the system of the canonical variable is defined, are defi the evolution is defined by the Hamilton equations. Hmm? And if you look uh, at the structure of the Hamilton equation, you soon observe that they're not symmetric. They're not symmetric because uh, there is a sign that is strange, no? But, okay, comes from the definition. 
And that this is the p and q are not equivalent, no? Because q are the coordinates and p are the momentum. They are independent, but they are not equivalent, not the same thing. So they are not the same variable. Generally, when I, when I write uh, a dynamical system, I write something like this, f of x without specifying, without specifying x and y. No? Generally, I say x because they define the phase space. In this case, I have to specify that the phase space is, uh, this, it, there are two distinct uh, uh, coordinates in the phase space. So there is some count, some high, uh, an asymmetry, which is, hit, which is uh, uh, evident, no? OK. But there is an, a representation that is important in the dynamical system where this symmetry is lost. And it's called, I go there, and it's called the symplectic formulation. It's uh, symplectic formulation is the compact uh, formulation of dynamical systems. And uh, it's also it's helpful, it's ha very helpful because it highlights uh, some uh, geometrical properties of, of Hamiltonian systems. Basically, someone usually say that uh, the Hamiltonian dynamics is nothing but a geometric differential, um, a differential geometry on uh, symplectic uh, manifolds. So actually, the, 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 the Hamiltonian dynamics can be interpreted in terms of geometry, differential geometry. In fact, many, in many books you can find this, uh, this analogy that is very helpful because uh, you can translate all the properties of the, geometric, uh, ge the geometrical differential um, geometry onto uh, dynamical, uh, dynamical systems. There is a mapping. OK. The way to write uh, this, uh, this representation is uh, in this way, you introduce, uh, you introduce uh, x, the vector x, containing both uh, in, in, uh, momentum and uh, coordinates. Uh, and x is defined like this. <coughs> for, 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 for i going from 1 to n, it contains the, the, the coordinates. For the rest of the vector, it contains the, uh, the, the momentum. Hmm? And the way you define the equation of motion, your Hamiltonian equation of motion, is this one, where J is a matrix that now contains the asymmetry of the sign. In fact, is defined like this. This is the O is the uh, null matrix of order uh, N. I is the identity matrix of order N. And this is, of course, the, the, the general matrix. F, the field of the Hamiltonian field, in this way is written like uh, this matrix for the, with the gradient. Hmm? Now we can use uh, the usual representation of dynamical systems. Okay. The fact that this, uh, the symmetry, so the fact that this, the uh, Hamiltonian uh, can be written in this way, so it's a symplectic, it enforces uh, a lot of properties, uh, a lot of constraints on the Hamiltonian dynamics. And one constraint is evident when you try to make the change of variables. If you want to make the change of variable from one Hamiltonian system to another Hamiltonian system, you have to be very careful. Hmm? So the symplectic structure restricts the choice of eligible transformation. Not any transformation is admittable, OK? And how can we see that? We see that <coughs> in this simple way. So in mathematical terms, you have your transformation from x to capital X to the canonical variables to other canonical variables. This is the starting uh, Hamiltonian systems. And this is the final Hamiltonian system upon the transformation. Now, the requirement is that you want that this transformation preserve the structure of the equation of Hamilton equations. So 
in the variable in the coordinate x you have this equation but also in the coordinates as capital x you should have the same equations the same form of the equation in the capital in the hamiltonian the new hamiltonian okay the transformation which preserves the Hamilton equation are called canonical transformation. And how we, uh, what's the property of, of, this, uh, of this transformation? Very simple. In fact, uh, you make the, the computation. No? You have the, the starting, uh, your starting system. You apply this transformation and you discover that the, deriva the derivative in time transform in, in this way with respect to the capital, to the capital coordinate, where M, M is the Jacobian matrix of the transformation. If you make the, th the same thing with respect to the, the gradient, so this is derivative of time, but you have also to transform the gradient, of course, and the gradient transforms according to the transformation in this way, where M again is the, is the uh, um, Jacobian matrix of, uh, of X. If you put them together, you want that this uh, object form again a uh, Hamiltonian equation. You arrive to this equation, okay? And immediately you see that uh, the Jacobian matrix should satisfy these properties where J, I recall, I remind you that J is the matrix that we have defined at the beginning and is to beginning and is, is this matrix, okay? Where J is the matrix. So any canonical transformation or symplectic transformation, there are generally are confused, there are Synonym. <coughs> Any symplectic transformation must satisfy these properties. Okay. <coughs> these properties means automatically no, that the modulus of the determinant is one. In fact, it's, it's very simple because if you, if you apply the properties of the determinant, and this is good because you know that Hamilton dynamics should preserve the volumes of the phase space. Okay. So the symplectic determinant, the, the, the automatically, the fact that the uh, transformation is symplectic satisfies this, this, this is a definition. Eh? Jacobian is symplectic if a matrix in general is symplectic, it satisfies this, uh, this, uh, this equation. Of course, the determinant of symplectic matrix uh, is uh, one, and this is, of course, natural because, as I told you, Hamiltonian dynamics should preserve, sorry, should, pre no, I'm going, oh, sorry, excuse me. Okay, it's another, okay. And, uh, okay, we will see that it preserves the, the, the volume of the phase space. And, uh, of course, we can, we can show that, for example, if you integrate uh, a Hamilton equation, for example, the integration of Hamilton equation is a canonical transformation, okay? The map of the flow is a canonical transformation. In fact, if you, if you try to, to make the, 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 the computation, you see that it satisfies, it's a, it's a, it's a symplectic transformation. Okay, this is basically, the integration can be considered a change of variable from t to t plus tau, your integration step, okay. 
and is, uh, is, uh, is canonical, and in fact it's called the symplectic flow map. This implies, again, the fact that it is canonical implies the Liouville theorem, the conservation of the, the, of the phase space, the, the volume of the phase space. Now, uh, the fact that this, uh, the system is symplectic has also a practical, uh, uh, this is important, I think. It's a, also a practical uh, uh, implication implication because if you try to integrate on your computer uh, an, Hamilton, an, Hamilton, uh, an Hamiltonian dynamics, for example, you construct the map of the flow. You try to construct the map of the flow, no? You are trying, you, you, you construct the map each time step, no? But uh, this, uh, this in sch integration scheme should be symplectic. Mm? Should be a symplectic integrator. And in fact, the difference that you can see is this. If you make a naive, let's say, naive discretization of your Hamilton equation, for example, you have this uh, uh, iteration scheme no? at time t, and this is, and this is the, the state at time t, at time t plus h is uh, the state at time t plus these two terms, okay? And if you compute the determinant of this transformation, the, the, the Jacobian of this transformation, and you make the determinant of the flow map, no? what you, you observe is, of course, there is a, 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 um, a conservation of the, the volume up to a term of h square. Okay? So you have one because the Hamiltonian dynamics preserve the, 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 the Lebesgue measure, so preserve the volumes, but you have a term of order one, up to, so the precision is up to order one. If you change a little bit the scheme, and instead of doing this, you consider the momentum, this momentum, not at time t, but at, at time t plus h, so this is basically what is called in, in, uh, in numeric analysis is uh, an implicit scheme. You improve much more. You, 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 you are uh, making a small error, of course. But the advantage is that the determinant of, uh, of uh, zero no, is one. So the determinant of this transformation is exactly one. Sorry, it's not zero, but it's one. And this is an error. So this scheme is considered truly symplectic, and in fact it is the simplest symplectic scheme that can use on a computer to simulate the, uh, dynamical, uh, the um, Hamiltonian dynamical systems. Okay. Of course, if you want to go to higher order, you have to work very lot, hard, very hard, but it's impossible. In fact. There is a class of integration of, of integrators that are called uh, symplectic integrators that are very useful if you want to uh, to consider dynamic uh, Hamilton dynamics. Okay, how much time have? Including the 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 interval. Okay, I I think okay. I try to just use slides. Okay. Okay. Just, just this is only as well, this is only an information, not important. But if you read the book, okay, you can you can find uh, the fact that the, the determinant of the, the Jacobian of a symplectic matrix is one. Of course, is a consequence of the preservation of the is another cause is uh, another indication that the fact that the volume of uh, the transformation of the, of the, uh, of the Hamilton dynamics is or we preserved, okay? In fact, uh, this is the way when you change the variable during the integration, okay? If this is determinant is one, so the volume are the same. But uh, the, the um, Hamilton dynamics preserve a lot of 
of uh, many uh, invariant, uh, not only the volume, the volume it is invariant, but there is a lot, a cascade, I would say, of uh, integrals. And then, and they are considered uh, Poincaré integrals or Poincaré Cartan integrals. And basically, if you can prove, you can prove, for example, that Hamilton dynamics preserve also this form, also this quantity. In this is in differential, it's a differential form, but you can do also in integral form, okay? Where CDT is a closed form, is a closed curve in the phase space, moving according to Hamilton dynamics. Another invariant, for example, is the Poincaré Cartan differential form. I show you what is this. And this is another differential form which is conserved by the Hamilton dynamics. This is in the differential form. This is an integral form, okay? And pictorially, these two things are something like that, and I can stop here with it. Pictorially, <coughs> you can find these, these pictures in books of Hamiltonian dynamics. Pictorially means that if you have your phase space, P and Q, and this is time, the integral of Poincaré Cartan is, if you take uh, a curve of initial conditions and you make this curve an initial condition flowing according to Hamiltonian flow, you obtain another, another curve. Of course, every curve that envelope that uh, encompass the flow, this is called the tube flow, hmm? preserve this integral that is called integral of Poincaré Cartan. If you consider this, uh, uh, this line instead of at a different time, at a given time, so the, these states are initial conditions, simultaneous initial condition. You have that uh, no more this term contribute, uh, no? Because you have a time, so you don't have this, uh, this, the, this term, because dt is, uh, of course, zero, because the states are simultaneously. And you end up to the same integral, it's called integral of Poincaré, and it's called, and this, uh, where c is the integral of uh, uh, Simultaneous initial condition, simultaneous state, okay? Canonical transformation is able to preserve both integral. In the books, you can find some um, sections uh, uh, devoted to the fact that uh, there are in, in integral, invariant integrals that are called invariant of Poincaré or integral of Poincaré-Cartan. And... Uh, Okay, I can stop here. So if there are questions uh, or comments, uh, I would like to, to answer. And also I would like to, to know if the, so some feedback about the audience, if uh, the, the level is uh, sufficient or high to low, I'm going to, to, I'm going to, to fast, I'm going to, to slow some, Honestly, yeah? frankly, without it's boring. It's a boring course. Eh? <laughs> for for me, it's, it's an interesting course, and I would say for me it's a little bit fast. Too fast, you mean? Well, for me, yeah. Mm. And, uh, what's your uh, educational uh, history? You bachelor. are from uh, mm? the bachelor. Very the bachelor, so you have never seen these things. Uh, uh, this I saw it, but still, like, um, mm. I mean, so I, I have seen it, but, but you can you can time. follow you can follow or yeah, I can follow. I can follow. Uh, for example, the part of the metro theory, I haven't seen it, but I follow it. Mm -hmm. But for example, this, this part is uh, completely, it's just all information, just to give you an idea. Because my idea is, if the students want to read a book, 
they, have, they should have uh, at least uh, some information, some vague information of what the, the meaning, just looking at the content. No? If you, you see Pancare Cartan, what's that Pancare Cartan? I have to read, I have to skip, probably. And this gives you an idea what is that, no? So you can uh, adjust uh, your reading of the, the reading of your book according to the to the knowledge. So the, uh, I'm trying to give you some uh, information about how to read the book on dynamical systems and even mathematical books, because uh, there are lots of mathematical books and interesting mathematical. But they have they are uh, a bit hard to, to read, and I would like to that you can orient on, uh, on the, the, the great uh, landscape of dynamical systems that is very huge because it's an old, an old topic. Hmm? OK. So the next time we will discuss uh, if you survive, if you will survive, we discuss canonical transformation, how, how to construct uh, canonical transformation.